No, you cannot put the cat in the washing machine. I don't care if it's dirty. You don't put the cat in the washing machine. Just bathe it outside in the hose or something. Oh, sorry. Uh, crazy kids. Um, so today's lesson is about scatter plots, and it's been brought to you by the cell phone because during quarantine, cell phone usage has gone quite high. Take a look at some of your teachers on their cell phones. So we're going to be talking about scatter plots, and our goal is to be able to understand what a scatter plot is, how to create a scatter plot, and answer some questions related to a scatter plot. So that's what we're going to be covering. So let's get to it. So this is an example of a scatter plot. And a scatter plot is a type of graph that shows the relationship between two sets of numerical data. So it's very similar to when we did our coordinate graphing. So it's basically the same thing. You have your x-axis and you have your y-axis. And so in this one, this is an example, we're talking about ice cream cone cells. So you have the x-axis is going to be represented by the temperature. The y-axis is going to be represented by the number of ice cream cone cells sold or the amount of money that they're going to make for the ice cream cells. So this is, you know, an, a graph basically comes down to it. Now the numbers are not spaced the same like we would in a regular graph on a coordinate plane, but this is essentially going to run the same way. So this is temperature in Celsius, that's why zero degrees or freezing, which is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, is going to be here. And then the warmer it is, the more ice cream cone cells we have. So it is also related to input output table. So you can see like this input output table, just like when we did coordinate graphs, you can use an input output table. So these are those dots. These right here represent all the dots that are here, right here. So you have your X and you have your Y. And just like on coordinate graphs, you can see your input output tables could be horizontal as well. Both of them work. So the temperature again represents the X axis and these represent the Y axis. So zero degrees Celsius, five degrees, five dollars. So if we look at our chart, zero degrees Celsius, five dollars. But these aren't all in the same order, but it's going to be kind of like this. Now there is no rule for this input output table. You're just basically graphing these numbers. So if we have 12 and 5 tenths degrees Celsius, $30. So we would go to our graph, 12 and 5 tenths, which is going to be this number right here, this line, and then you can put your dot up here. So that's basically it. That is a coordinate graph. So let's go ahead and practice making our own. So I want you to go ahead and draw this little graph on your piece of paper. If you have, if you already have some graph paper, you can use that, that would be perfect. If not, you can just draw some lines like this. You're gonna have your x-axis and you have your y-axis, and we're gonna talk about the number of phones owned by age. So this is gonna represent, the x-axis is gonna represent the age, so how, how old you are. And I just skipped every other one, so we know that each one of these is gonna represent five. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. If you want to add those numbers, you can. I just did every other one knowing what those were. And then on the y-axis, we can see the, <clears throat> the number of phones that we have. So two, four, six, eight. And then again, I skipped every other one, so I didn't have to do as much, and it makes it a little easier to read. So you're creating this. If you haven't already, pause and finish creating this. So our goal is going to take this input output table, this information here on this chart, and I want you to plot those points on this graph that you just created. So I want you to go ahead and think about this. And remember, we're always going to do our x-axis, move to our x-axis, then you move up. So I'm going to move 10, find 10 on the x-axis, and then move up that many for the y-axis. Okay, so hopefully you paused it. If you see here, we have 10, 0. So I went over 10 and up 0. So that was this coordinate graph here. Okay. Next, we had 32, 10. So I went over 32, which is not quite 235. So that's why it's in between. Over to 32, up 10. So a 32-year-old had 10 phones. 45, a 45-year-old had 14 phones. So 45, I'm going to go over to 45. I'm going to 45, 
up to 14. Another person that was polled, 36 year old, had six phones. So I'd go over to 36 right here and then put six. Up six. 12 two, so I 12 year old had two phones. I don't know why a 12 year old already had two phones, but they did. So 12 and then up two. And then an 18 year old had three phones. So an 18 year old up three. Yeah, pretty easy, right? And a 24 year old had six phones. So we'd go over here, 24, up six. All right, so that is basically it. That is all there is to a scatter plot. So you can actually see this is a this would be considered a positive correlation. So it correlates, it's positive. You can see as for the most part, when people get older, they have had more phones in their life. So uh, if it went the other direction, it would be called a negative correlation, which you don't really need to know this. And if it didn't have any correlation, it would just be all over the place. But that's neither here nor there. That's just an example. All right, so now let's go ahead and make another one. So we're going to look at this one. And I, this is going to be our example. You do not have to draw this one, but I'm going to ask you some questions. So in the beginning, we talked about how your teachers have been on the phone more. So during quarantine, how much time do we spend? Now, if we looked at pre-quarantine, our time on the phones would be a lot less. But now that we're home a lot more, we're on the phone a lot more. Me, I'm watching Netflix, I guess. I don't know. So we're going to now look at put the dots over the teacher. So each color represents a different teacher. So we plotted four weeks here. And I'm going to give you some information. I'm going to give you an input output table of a teacher. And you are going to see which color represents that teacher. So each one of these different colors represents a different teacher. So here's the first one. So we have Miss Hampton. So I want you to pause the video. I want you to see if you can figure out which one of these colors represents Miss Hampton. So Miss during week one, Miss Hampton used 274 on average per day, 274 minutes. So we'd go to week one, up to 274. Now our x-axis represents the weeks. Our y-axis represents the average time per day. So notice each of these lines are going up by 25. So 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, 150, and so on. So we're looking for 274. So I'm going to go up to week one. I'm going to go over to week one. Go up to 274. So this would be 275 is really close. That's this dark blue one. So now we're going to go to week two, 339. Week two, 339. Right here, that's past 325 is right there. So that's dark blue again. Week three, 321. Week three, 321. Week four, 328. Here's three, week four, 328, and so forth. So that's Miss Hampton. So Miss Hampton's graph there. Let's look at Miss Jackson's. I want you to see if you can guess Miss Jackson's. All right, so week one, 319. Week one, 319, can be this dark purple. Week two, 286, still dark purple. Week three, 248, go over week three, 248, almost to 250, right there, dark purple. And week four, 268. So good. So there we have 268. So Miss Jackson is going to be dark purple. See if you can guess what Miss Lagos is. Yeah. Miss Lagos apparently does not like her cell phone. She spends an average of three minutes maybe just calling somebody during the day. Very little on her cell phone. So three minutes. Yeah, it's going to be this red down here. Yeah, that's the only one that's way down here. Miss Lagos is the outlier. So she's over there by herself. Then you have Miss Malfris. Go ahead and see if you can guess what Miss Malfris is. If we look, week one, we're going to go up to 372. 372, oh, right there, that light pink. Week two, 366. 366, really close to the other one, right there. Week three, 262. Week three, 262, right there, that light pink again. And week four, 240. Week four, 240. So yes, that light pink is Miss Malfris. Miss Purnell. Yep, it is going to be the light blue, right? Because it's week one, 424. Week two, 435. 
Week 3, 479. Week 4, 323. Good. Then you have Miss Salhiever. Which color is Miss Salhiever? Kind of narrowing it down. We're losing options here in colors. Week 1, 348. Right here, the yellow. Week 2, 323. Yep, if you got yellow, you're right. Week 3, 343. Week 4, 253. A lot less there. Boom. Then you have Miss Burrow. What color is Miss Burrow? What week 1? 389. So way up here, 389. So if you think if you have orange, you are correct. It is orange. Week 2, 390. Boom. Week 3, 370. Right there. And week 4, 300. Right on there. Excellent. So orange was hers, which leaves mine to be dark green, right? 400, week 1, 405. Week 2, 374. Week 3, 385. And week 4, 358. So that is basically it. That is it. That is all there is to it. Now you know understand scatter plots, and you can answer some questions that go with it. All right, if you have any other questions, please ask your teachers, emails. We are really wanting to help you, especially since this is brand new subject matter. Just let us know if you need help. All right, now let's get to your teachers who are on their phones. Hey, Miss Purnell, you ready to go run? Just one minute. I just need to finish this email real quick. Oh, you, that's not email. Well, I mean, I'm just trying to beat this level, just crushing it over here in this candy world. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm but... I'm getting there. We're supposed to be running. All right, I'll be right there. I just got to win real quick. Okay, okay. I'm almost done. You almost got it. Check my Instagram. Okay, I'm gonna check my Facebook. Oh, now I'm gonna go check my Pinterest because I need to do some crafts today. What should we have for dinner tonight? How about chicken? No more chicken. Tortilla soup? It's too hot for soup. How about spaghetti? You love spaghetti. Didn't we just have spaghetti? I've got it. Tacos. Yeah, everybody loves tacos. <laughs> 